Okay, welcome to part three of this series of what I have been doing in the garden in 2020. <laughs> this is vegetable garden number one. Some of this went in in 2019, most of it went in in the summer of 2020. So consequently, we've got a few of the older beds, which are like, you've got plants in that have overwintered. And that includes this mad patch of garlic, which are just absolutely massive. Here you've got a, a rogue walking onion and a few, um, oh God, what are they called, man? Raspberries with a few strawberries across the front. In this bed, which is approximately oh, eight foot, eight foot six square, we've got some Swiss chard, also known as rainbow chard. We've got black, uh, oh God, what's it called, man? Black, black radish, which is jet black. This net needs to come off now because these plants are actually starting to grow through it. Um, I'll just put that on just to stop the pigeons hammering it. In here we've got some late potatoes, tatoes, taties, tatties, and they're starting to come up really well. They're in a huge bed of horse muck, so I'm expecting a massive crop from them. All the way along the back of here, we've got a mixture of Black currant bushes, red currant bushes, strawberries. Oh God, there's, there's all sorts in there. It's just basic fruit to make like a fruit hedge there. In the next of the big beds, we've got some onions. They went in about three weeks ago and they're already huge. I could probably take this net off now, but I just put it on there just to stop the cats digging it out or pigeons pulling these out. I think they'll probably be pretty well rooted now. Yeah, they are. In here, we've got some reject show leeks. My friend Michael from a local um, nursery, which is Beverages, gave me these. He basically gets given them from folks who don't want them. They've basically got too many. So he gets the, the cast-offs and he gave me a big tray of those. They're really doing well. In fact, everything's doing really well down here. The, the ground is just so nutritious. It's all recycled compost. So everything's kind of, you know, <laughs> ecologically sound and <laughs> sustainable and in this last little triangular bed we've got more black currants um, oh, blueberries pink blueberries there's all sorts in there more of them along there what are these ones more blueberries these two things are joster berries which is apparently a cross between oh what is it a black currant and a God, what is it, man? Black, black currant and a. Oh, wait, yeah, man. God, my memory's absolutely atrocious. Black currant and a gooseberry. So I'm expecting great things from them. Maybe it's not this year, but certainly next year. And if you're wondering what all these pipes are doing, blighting the landscape, these are part of my watering system. The smaller beds, i.e., this one and the garlic bed at the far end have a gate valve on which allows me just to lift that and quickly water this bed because this is really quite a long way away from where I store the water I also have two water butts here well water troughs each one's approximately two foot by three foot by about two foot deep i think they hold 150 liters each that's really handy just to dip a water and can into and they're really easy to fill up as well because if you notice they've got a valve on there i'll show you just how much water comes out as well um I'll do it from this one first of all i'll show you this go <laughs> that's watering for the lazy man <laughs> and all that water is coming directly from the drains that are on the bottom of my filters which are over this hilltop so they're probably oh I don't know 30 meters away maybe now these drains also run down here down the side of the lawn and they go down to my second vegetable garden which we'll be taking a look at in the next video. Oh, we're definitely not short of water. 
Now, as well as what I've shown you, there's also a nation of little fruit trees which have dotted around the place. There's a, a gooseberry hedge down here. It'll probably be really great next year. It has got quite a few on this year, but um, next year is going to see it really fill out. And there's also a nation of other little fruit trees down here. Again, it's going to be two or three years before they really do anything. The one thing I didn't show you is the little wild strawberries around the outside of the trough. Any of the overspilling water just gets taken up by the strawberries and hopefully they'll produce me a little crop of intense tasting wild strawberries. Now all these beds have been made with reclaimed railway sleepers and if you're watching this in 2021 and you want to replicate this you'd be lucky to get any. I planned this garden 2019. I got a lot of the sleepers 2019, picked up the rest early 2020. If you're trying now in mid 2021, you'll have a hell of a job in the UK to get railway sleepers. You'll even have a hell of a job getting new so-called railway sleepers, which are cut from softwood. All these are hardwood and it took well, it took three of us to get these big beds in. I put the smaller beds in myself. I, I called in help to get them finished off because these are so, so heavy. You, you literally can't lift one yourself unless you've got it close to you and you've got it in like a bear hug and then you can't do anything with it. You know, if you have one person at one end, one in the middle and one at the other end, it makes them much easier to handle. And I've really got to thank my brother, Peter, and my mate Jimmy for helping me to finish this off. I'm very pleased with it. Oh, it's just about to wrap up there. And I've just remembered I haven't shown you my invention. I like to make things easier. If I have a, a job or a task that I think, you know, this is the right part on this, I wonder how I can make it easier. I just almost go into a trance. I see something, I build it in my mind and then I build it in real life. This thing I'm going to show you is such a thing. It's basically something that allows me to water heavily very quickly. Check this out. All right now we've got a gate valve here with a two inch outlet. It feeds into a pipe, flexible pipe, which feeds into this solvent pipe and that's two inches of 45 degree around there. There's a, oh, what do you call it, a hose tail with a clip on there to hold that in. So that feeds water into here. We've got a gate valve here to control the flow. We've got a handle. <laughs> and then we've got an end on there. You maybe can't see it, but it's got loads of holes drilled in it. Let's get a bit closer. There you go. It almost looks like a howitzer barrel. And I'll show you just how effective this is by watering these leaks very quickly. Right, so what I would normally do is shut this gate valve to prevent any water coming out. I would open that valve to allow water to come into the pipe. And then I would pick this thing up and lift this valve to let the water out of the end. And you'll be pretty impressed when you see how much water comes out of here. Here we go. Come on. And remember, all of that is coming from the drains on the pond filters. Super nutritious water. And as I said, we can control the flow with a gate valve. That's more like it. There you go. What do you reckon of that? Now these raised beds behind me are all lined out on the inside with a uh, like a perm permeable, uh, not perforated. What would you call it? Like a landscape fabric, a woven landscape fabric, which goes about two thirds up the side and all the way along the bottom. That helps to retain the moisture a bit, stops any weeds coming up from the existing ground, and it probably stops a lot of slugs coming through 
from the sides or from the bottom because they like to travel up through the soil if they can't climb over things I don't know don't seem to get a problem with the slugs here which is good so as far as sleepers go there's probably I don't know 35 40 big railway sleepers used to make this thing um, the the landscape fabric I'll put a link to in the video description and the net that I've used here is a multi-season pond net or fruit cage net I didn't want to go for the cheap crap because it just doesn't last as soon as you had like one season of Sun on it it would just start to break this is really good stuff I think I bought 100 meters of it which is far too much because it's six meters wide but I wanted plenty for any future projects so this is veg garden one the next video I'll show you veg garden two and that's the good one or should I say that's the better one so I think this one is pretty good that one is better I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching